fundamental question in evolutionary biology is the evolution of ornament, especially sexual ornament. And uh, one way to look at that, uh, how that evolves, is to ask why are certain traits preferred? The peacock's tail or the song of a wood thrush? In The Origin of Species, Charles Darwin proposed uh, that organisms evolve by natural selection uh, to become more and more adapted to their environment. Uh, in proposing this mechanism, Darwin articulated the concept of fitness, which was an aspect of the individual uh, that allowed it to further its own survival or fecundity. It was like physical fitness. It was something the individual could do in order to, to, to further its survival. However, later during uh, the early 20th century with the development of modern population genetics, the idea of fitness, the concept of fitness was redefined uh, in an abstract mathematical way to mean one's relative contribution uh, of, of one's genes to subsequent uh, populations. In this case, fitness incorporated both uh, uh, survival and fecundity and uh, differential reproductive success or natural selection and sexual selection. Uh, this is okay except that the new revised concept of fitness kept its romantic association with the idea of adaptation by natural selection even though it applied to both uh, uh, survival and uh, mate choice which, uh, which Darwin saw as essentially an aesthetic process. Right? So what that means is that in the early 20th century uh, evolutionary biology and selection became synonymized with natural selection. Right? This had a number of problems which, uh, for example, it built sh right into the machinery of evolutionary biology the idea that mate choice is always adaptive or is or should be about adaptation. 100% uh, of evolutionary biologists from about 1890 to 1938 were either ardent eugenicists or happy fellow travelers. Uh, full stop. Uh, and that uh, unfortunate past is really uh, part of our history as a discipline. And I think evolutionary biology has a special responsibility to scrutinize uh, the intellectual developments during that period and the way in which those, uh, those concepts influence uh, the way we think about evolution today. Animals uh, have an opportunity for uh, sensory perception, cognitive evaluation, and choice. And based on their choices, certain kinds of ornament uh, will evolve. According to the beauty happens theory, uh, beauty evolves merely because it's preferred. And what that means is that in, uh, uh, in a population, mate choice will create some norm, some standard that is preferred within the population. Uh, but also that standard is unstable over time. It can change. Now this theory, beauty happens, goes back to uh, Charles Darwin who proposed after the origin of uh, species uh, an alternative or new theory for the evolution of ornament uh, through mate choice or sexual selection. When Darwin proposed that mate choice uh, was a force in evolution back in the Victorian era, uh, the idea was a big loser among his uh, colleagues. Uh, they were very skeptical that animals could be even capable of choice, uh, let alone uh, the kind of aesthetic judgments that, 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 that Darwin proposed. Under the Wallacean view, all beauty is merely uh, another kind of practical utility. Uh, that beauty, like the peacock's tail, is preferred because it indicates uh, something about that individual. Uh, either that he has good genes, or uh, a good diet, or no sexually transmitted diseases. All sorts of things that uh, mates need to know. Uh, the challenge, of course, is to try to figure out uh, uh, what's actually happening in nature. Modern evolutionary biologists are quite comfortable with the idea that animals are making choices, yet they still uh, are by and large confident that um, the kinds of choices that animals make will always be controlled by or determined by natural selection. That is, that uh, mate choice will ultimately lead to the evolution of adaptive or honest uh, ornaments. This uh, uh, flattening, simplification of the Darwinian worldview directly contributed to the eugenic history of evolutionary biology. That is, uh, during the late 19th and early 20th century, 100% of evolutionary biologists believed that human diversity had evolved as a result of adaptation 
uh, to, to diversity of environments. And this meant that human populations, uh, ethnic groups and races were actually adapted to different environments in a hierarchy of quality, right? Uh, this, of course, was uh, uh, this uh, eugenic theory actually failed to be supported and has been scientifically rejected. And yet aspects of the logic of eugenics were built into the early or fundamental concepts of modern uh, evolutionary biology through the concept of fitness. So how do we proceed forward? I think the best way is to define natural selection and sexual selection as distinct mechanisms, sometimes interacting. This is a return to the Darwinian concept of uh, the Dar Darwinian structure of evolutionary biology, and I think it's one that actually will inoculate uh, evolutionary biology from its eugenic roots uh, by essentially uh, uncoupling uh, mate choice from uh, the definition of adaptation. I think of this like a spinning top. Mate choice creates the forces that allows the top to spin and stand uh, on its own in one place. But over time, with small disruptions, the top can skitter from one place or one direction or another. So uh, what that means is as species form, they tend to evolve new and different varieties of beauty each more complex than the last, uh, like a, a, a spinning top. If you spin it uh, uh, 10,000 times, each time it'll arrive at a different place. Uh, and that's one way in which I think the beauty happens theory uh, looks a lot like nature itself, uh, where different species all have different ideas about what's beautiful. Mm -hmm.